Hi, everyone. There you go. I'm going to start with orientation for taxation. My name is Sanya Asif, and I am going to be your mentor, your tutor for a taxation subject, which is being held for ACCA under UK stream. So here's my a very short profile. You can uh, see that I am a tutor as well as international trainer, particularly for ACCA. Uh, I have uh, taught taxation. I have been teaching taxation for UK, advanced taxation, financial accounting in ACCA. Uh, I've also taught SEMA. And uh, in Pakistan, I am teaching financial literacy uh, in our local CA courses, chartered accountancy courses. It's been 18 years since I am connected with uh, ACCA, specifically with taxation and advanced taxation subjects. I've also held train the trainer sessions across the globe. Uh, uh, multiple times it's been held online and uh, uh, it's been an honor for me to visit Africa where I had to conduct a face-to-face -face session and it was basically not just for the students but uh, for the training of the trainers as well. Simultaneously, uh, multiple study schools systems have been uh, like supervised and conducted by me Apart from that, I am a content writer for taxation, advanced taxation, UK, as well as for SEMA papers. I'm also running a small business where I am offering uh, financial as well as taxation consultancy services. My clients are basically uh, international ones. So that's basically my brief introduction. I would like to show you one more thing that when you connect to your ACCA website, there you can be able to see the demo that is being uploaded by my name. This is something which I conducted for my European students and uh, it is like being uploaded by ACCA. So whosoever gets registered uh, for ACCA can see this video, but it is specifically for advanced taxation. But I just wanted to tell you that it's been long since I am in the stream of taxation. So one should be like really very confident when you have to take a start with me in this journey of taxation. So let me just tell you certain housekeeping rules and these are like I would like you people to keep your cameras microphones turned off unless and until I would ask you to open them so I just hope you people are uh, like comfortable with this thing I am not uh, going to bother you much but I may uh, decide to like uh, keep on uh, watching your pretty faces on and off during the session because just to make sure of myself that everyone in my class is like attentive so but generally I would like that all the cameras and the microphones are switched off and in case you need to ask any question, I prefer that the question has to be dropped in the dialog box and through the dialog box chat, I'll first read the question and then the answer will be given accordingly. So let's first talk about the syllabus of taxation. The syllabus of taxation is extensive as well as exhaustive but not difficult. So it is something for which you are not yet familiar with. You must have heard the name of taxation, but uh, before this paper, uh, you have not gone into through this stream. I mean, when you come to financial courses, you may have a base. You must have gone through financial uh, exams first. When you come to management side, uh, there may be like numerous paper which you have already taken before 
but when it comes to taxation then this is like going to be something which is being done for the very first time but despite the fact it is going to be done for the very first time it's not going to be a difficult thing at all just tell me one thing when you come to know that a tax is being imposed on anything then what do you understand with this word i mean what understanding you develop when you hear the word taxation in simple words if i ask you what a taxation is then what should be your answer could you please drop your answers in the dialog box yes it's a government revenue i would like to hear from the rest of the you uh, rest of you people as well because i really want you people to be attentive in my session throughout the question is that what is meant by taxation it's a bill right and what actually happens to pair over here on the upper part of your body when you listen to the word taxation collecting revenue source of fund for the government a financial charge imposed on a taxpayer by the government precisely yes and incentivizing and discouraging behavior hmm quite tricky a mandatory payment imposed by the government on income uh goods or services it helps fund public services and infrastructure yeah a quite good detail of taxation it's a funding to be spent on country or locals so let me just summarize this thing all of you have given the correct answer so you wow you people have quite a good insight of what taxes i mean whatever you are going to study further you have an acceptance of that particular thing so tax is something which is to be taken as a charge for individual if i talk about myself if i am living in uk uh, when i say i have to pay tax then it should be considered as an expense this is an expense which i have to bear and to whom this tax has to be paid all of you have correctly answered that this is something which is though being imposed on the tax payers should be given to the government and the department of the government in uk which is handling all the affairs related to taxation that is said to be hmrc i have noticed that a uh, few of my students do belong to uk so they must be familiar of this word hmrc what does this hmrc stand for does anyone know this thing this is basically the department of the government who is responsible to collect taxes and to administrate and regulate all the affairs related to taxation but what does hmrc stands for right rc stands for revenue and customs that's perfect but what is then hm stands for to be very honest hm i don't know hmrc stands for her majesty revenue and customs her majesty her majesty shouldn't should it not be his majesty now as who is now the head of this state of uk in his name the government is being run what's your thought about this thing because the queen died and it's not related to any gender okay let's leave this point upon you and i'm just going to sum summarize this thing at the end because i am enjoying whatever the conversation is being passed from your side so hmrc basically the authority related to government who is responsible to administrate all the affairs related to taxation so now the thing is that in our syllabus there are basically 
five types of taxes to be taught but the structure of the tax is not just confined to these five types there are a lot of taxes which are being run in practical which are being taught but five types of taxes are there which are uh, considered to be the most important ones and uh, our syllabus is basically comprised over these five types of taxes and along with that we will also be considering one more important type of charge and that's called NIC. I hope you must be familiar with the word NIC. NIC stands for National Insurance Contribution. So let's first discuss about the top most important type of tax and that's called income tax. Income tax, if I tell you, is the type of tax which has to be paid by individuals. So if I am living in UK, if I'm a UK resident person, then whatsoever the income I am generating for any uh, source uh, from any part of the world, I shall be liable to pay tax on it and it is said to be income tax. So being an individual, if I reside in UK, if I consider to be a UK resident person, I'll be paying income tax over my income. Just tell me, if someone is UK resident and someone is living in UK, what sources are there through which an individual can earn money? What are the sources through which individual can earn something? Yeah, if someone is doing a job, he must be receiving salary. He is considered to receive employment income. Good. And the rental income, yes, if someone has let the building out, he must be receiving rental income. If someone is doing a business, he must be generating trading profit. You all are right. And the pension, yes, if someone is retired or has reached to some old age, he must be receiving pension. When someone makes an investment into shares, that must be receiving dividends. Yeah, you all are quite right. These are the famous four sources through which an individual can receive money. So whensoever an individual is receiving money from any source that is said to be uh, the income which is subject to taxation. There is one more source of income which is there in front of me and that is inheritance. If something is inherited, uh, let me just hold this word for some time and I'm just going, uh, I'm, I'll get back to this word short, uh, later shortly. So income tax is the type of tax which individuals have to pay over the regular sources through which they receive income, as in if they are doing some job, they must be getting employment income. If they are doing some sort of business, they must be getting a trading profit. If they have let the building out or they let the land out, they must be getting rental income. Apart from that, if someone is receiving interest or dividends, which we can concisely call as investment income, then these all regular sources are to be caught under the rules which uh, is to be considered as. And then there comes to be a very, another very important type of tax. Now, coming back to what we were discussing. There's one more important type of tax and it's called corporation tax. Now, just tell me one thing, what a corporate body is, because the type of this tax is being by the corporate bodies. What is a corporate body? It's a company, yes. You're right. 
any business which is being registered either as private limited or a public limited, it is said to be a corporate body, a company, and the companies have to pay the type of tax which is said to be a corporation tax. So corporation tax is a very important tax from economical perspectives because companies uh, do participate a lot in strengthening the economy of our country. Simultaneously, there is one more type of tax which is said to be capital gains tax. By capital gains tax, I mean to say that whensoever an individual is going to sell a non-current asset and profit is generated on it, then on the profit being generated on the disposal of non-current asset would lead us to the type of tax which is called capital gains tax or we can call it as CGT. So CGT is not a regular routine type of tax. It is a one-off type of tax and it is imposed whensoever an asset is sold, a non-current asset is sold uh, over a profit. So this is the type of tax which once again, individuals have to pay, but what there is a confusion. A uh, few moments ago, I said that individuals have to pay income tax. Right now I'm saying that individuals have to pay capital gains tax, but there has to be no confusion at all. Income tax is the type of tax which though paid by individuals, that's basically imposed on the income, on the incomes which are received from regular sources. But where it comes to uh, a one-off income, where it comes to the disposal of non-current asset, which has led to the generation of profit, that's the case where we have to pay off the tax, which is called capital gains tax. So I hope now the situation is clear. Uh, Income tax is imposed on routine sources of income while capital gains tax is imposed on a profit being generated on the disposal of non-current asset. And then one of the students uh, has recently said about inheritance. See, we have our separate system of tax which is called inheritance tax which is being imposed on inherited properties. So where an individual is going to get an inheritance, that's basically the point where inheritance tax shall have to be imposed. Now tell me one thing. When inheritance word appears in your mind, what do you actually imagine? What's the situation where inheritance can take place? Or simply, if I would ask you that what is meant by inheritance? What do you think? I really want to uh, have an answer from all of you. It's a very simple thing. It's not something, a complicated thing. I just want to know that what is your idea about inheritance? Class, can I ask you to, to turn your cameras on? I just want to see your faces, what you people are doing. Are you stuck somewhere? Pass down assets, something you get from your parents, money from parents. Just the parents. Some funds of property passed down to you or ancestors, right? Precisely, yes. And what do you believe? Does inheritance take place only uh, at the time of someone's death or it can uh, take place during the life of the donor? Assets passed down to individuals and when someone dies, there's another definition being given to me um okay can take place when alive as well yes inheritance is basically a procedure when a property whether it's in the form of current asset or non-current asset for instance a land building or cash at bank 
whensoever the property, whether in the form of current asset or non-current asset is being passed from one person to another, whether the person who is giving away the estate is alive or dead, that's the situation where inheritance is taking place. But the best definition is that the donor is giving away the asset while recipient is not paying anything. Recipient is the happiest person on the earth because he's just receiving the property. He, it is a gratuitous gift. He is not paying anything in response. That's where inheritance takes place. So if you say that fathers are going to pass their property down to their children, so technically donors are making a transfer, but what the recipient is doing, he's doing nothing. He's just on the other uh, side to welcome the property and Uh, the thing is, uh, the, the recipients are the happiest person because they are on the other side to receive something. They are going to get the land, property or the cash at bank happily without paying anything in response. So it's a gratuitous type of gift. You, it is an unconditional gift on which inheritance tax has to be imposed. Yes, when you have not paid anything for it, men. Uh, then why you need to pay inheritance tax on it? Oh, great question. For instance, there is Mr. A. He is passing on his property to his child. The child is not going to give away anything in response to Mr. A. This is where the inheritance is going to take place. So here, we can say that inheritance has taken place as property has been transferred from one person to another, but it's government's uh, rule or regulation that they are going to impose inheritance tax over such transfer. Now, if I consider Mr. A is alive, I mean, the donor is alive and the recipient, the donor, we can also call him as a donor, he is also alive, then either the donor or the recipient shall have to bear the burden of taxes because whensoever there's a transfer uh, of the wealth, whenever the recipient is going to be changed, I mean, whenever the ownership of the thing is being transferred, that's the case where government is ready to ask for the taxes because if there is like no concept of inheritance taxes, then properties will have been transferred from ancestors to their successors the properties will keep on uh, being transferred from one person to another by not giving any share to the government. So government has imposed this type of tax that whenever there is found to be a change in the ownership of the asset, that's the point where government is ready to take the taxes because this is the type of tax which is being imposed on wealthy person. Because if you are wealthy, you must have the wealth and which is being transferred to someone else, then don't you think that it is also uh, uh, the turn of the government to ask for the taxes as well? You are going to pass your property on to some of your like children or to your friends. And that's basically the point where government would say uh, that we are also here. We also need our share in this property and you'll be paying uh, just just a little bit of uh, the taxes to them so that's basically the tax which has to be paid when a wealth is being transferred it is not something being imposed on poors it is being imposed on those people who can afford it the question is is that to be paid on the spot or it can be paid later normally it is imposed on the spot so there must be a cap. Yes, there is a certain cushion up till which one does not have to bear the taxes. But if uh, the wealth which is being transferred is going to cross a certain threshold, that means you are like a rich, rich, which is why inheritance tax will, will have to be imposed on the excessive wealth being transferred. So yes, this is something which we will discuss later. And last but not the least, it's value added tax which you all must be familiar with. Either you have studied it before in your 
fundamental forces or you must be observing it on daily basis in your practical life because this is the type of tax which is imposed on the selling price of the good. So whensoever you as a customer, you are going to purchase any good or you are going to acquire any service, that's basically the point where the seller has to impose value added tax over the selling price of the product and it's actually you the customer who has to bear the burden of taxes but whatsoever the tax you are going to pay to whom it is being paid to the government the department of the government who is responsible to collect and regulate all the affairs related to taxation that's called hmrc so as what you people have correctly told me that this should be taken as an income for HMRC. It is the main source of income for government. So now what would government do with these taxes? What would government do with these uh, sources? Uh, I mean, th th this main source of revenue, this is the amount being collected by HMRC. And this is like going to be spent for the welfare of us, for the welfare of public. Government has to deal with a lot of things. Uh, but they they have like an unlimited responsibilities towards education, towards uh, um, the health issues, towards infrastructure, towards economy, towards everything which is like surrounding the public. And in order to execute a lot of things, government needs money. And this is the money that we pay to them in the name of taxes. And this is the amount they, which they are going to spend on us and technically, whatever we pay is going to give benefit to us. Now, I'm just coming back to my question, which I asked you a few moments ago. What does HMRC stands for? And you told me that RC stands for um, Revenue and Custom. And there was a debate. What does HM, HM stand for? Does it... Uh, has it to be taken as his majesty or her majesty that's a very simple question now it's king so how would we address him his majesty revenue and customs so basically it is specifically gender oriented it is his majesty revenue and customs but when queen was alive it was considered as her majesty revenue and customs so I just hope you got uh, the concept related to all types of taxes. Now, people, let me just tell you that how these all types of taxes are going to be discussed with you people along with one tax, which one should not forget, and that's NIC, National Insurance Contribution, because it is also a type of charge which individuals have to pay to government. And government basically is going to spend this amount for uh, the sake of bringing good to the society in terms of paying the amount to jobless people as an allowance and to those people who have been affected because of uh, any natural disaster, I mean, the earthquake, or they are the effectees of uh, flood and all. So national insurance contribution is another type of charge, is another type of tax, which we will discuss later. And this is the tax though collected by HMRC will be spent only for the sake of rehabilitation purposes, only over those matters which are either associated with like bringing greater good to the society. I mean, if the amount being collected in the name of NIC is going to be paid to those people who are jobless right now, see one thing that when uh, jobless people will be getting money, there is going to be a reduction in the crime rate. If nothing is going to be paid by the state, if state does not take the responsibility of jobless people, if there is an element of uh, unemployment in the society, there tend to be an increase in the crime rate. And if the crime rate is being increased, of course, it is going to deteriorate the country overall. So NIC is said to be an important type of tax. Fine. So this is basically our syllabus, which we will be covering 
uh, in terms of what, let me just tell you that how we are going to deliver the whole content, the whole thing with you people. So the most important thing in which you people are interested right now is that how we teach it at WIFI, at Virtual Institute for Higher Education. The whole syllabus related to Taxation UK is being given to you people in, your, in the recorded form. All the recorded lectures along with a little bit of the practice questions will be provided to you people. You can watch all the recorded sessions as per your convenience. I mean, if you are free in the morning, you can watch them. If you are free in the afternoon, you can watch them. If you are free before taking a nap, it's there to be seen. So as per your convenience, you can watch the recorded sessions. The whole syllabus of taxation has been divided into numerous uh, 15 to 20 bite-sized videos. And that is like going to be a comforting thing for the students because when you uh, turn on a certain video, you need not to be focused for one or two hours. You can keep on like quickly uh, completing 15 to 20 minute session. And that's how you can progress at a very quicker speed. And this is like going to be an effective methodology as far as communication or delivering of the lecture is concerned. Now, today is 15th of September. The recorded lectures will start getting provided to you from today. I just hope the introductory lecture must have been recorded on your portal. You can access it through your login details. It's for those students who have been enrolled. And after a gap of few days, I'll start taking weekly live sessions. In live sessions, I'll be doing the practice of those topics which have been covered by you people. I'm just going to show you uh, a planner, a schedule through which I have divided the whole syllabus. And I am just going to allocate you a certain syllabus and you will have to go through that syllabus before the live session is taken up. So when I uh, will be taking the first live class, I would expect that you have covered few chapters and the practice specifically associated with those chapters uh, will be conducted. And I will also tell you that which practice question can be done by you at uh, your place. Then once the live session is taking place, keeping this in mind that if anyone is going to miss live class, it's recording will also be made available later. So right after the live session comes to an end, an assignment will be given to you people. I mean, a quiz will be given to you people and a deadline will be given to you. Within that deadline, you will have to solve the assignment. You will have to solve that quiz and submit it. It will get marked and you will be able to come to know that how had been your performance. You and I, we both have been able to come to know that uh, what is actually your performance, how has been your understanding throughout those chapters. So this is how if you uh, take all the recordings very seriously, you attend the live classes and simultaneously the most important of all, if you keep on giving all the assignments in a regular manner, then that would mean that once the six live classes as what planned with you people, six live classes will come to an end. That would mean that you have covered the whole syllabus and your preparation is like properly done. 
once the whole book is completed then we will be conducting a a full fledged mock in fact two mock papers are going to be tested uh, out of which one will be marked and feedback will be shared with you people and i uh, myself will be checking the mock especially and i'll be pinpointing that uh, where you have incurred the mistake see you need to believe me uh, it's just that being a tutor being a person who has a vast experience in taxation field uh, one should know that the points that i'll be discussing in my recording recorded lectures and the feedback that i will be giving you along with the assignments and the mock are going to be very fruitful if you really want to pass your paper with flying colors it's my guarantee it's my promise that you people can easily pass your taxation examination it is no longer going to be a big issue for you as long as you are going to complete each and everything step by step as uh, in the manner has been uh, given to you in the form of plan and then a good two revision sessions uh, of 3 hours each will be conducted where i'll be discussing uh, the whole syllabus in terms of practice on a very comprehensive scale and that's how by considering all these things in the end you people uh, will have a quite comprehensive understanding of what taxation is and how you can implement all the rules in your exam by the way when your session comes to an end we can still uh, remain in touch on uh, whatsapp the whatsapp number is to be shared with you people let me just show it to you Three three zero three seven six zero three eight two. That's the number where you can contact me. All the queries, any issue related to taxation, could be dropped, and I would happily be responding to you people on earliest basis. So that's how we at Wifi. are aiming to aid you from every perspective related to your syllabus along with that if uh, while taking the live classes or going through the recorded session you come across any problem our dedicated support team is there to help you out their contact detail is being shown to you people in front of you while you can also email them at support at wifi dot com students um if you people will be uh, attempting all the assignments on time you people will be giving the mock exam and in the end you are going to uh like do everything that has been uh, that is being provided by wifi would give you uh, a chance to earn a score so if you attempt a mock a certain score is allotted to you people and on the basis of this at the end of the session you have a margin to earn a handsome score and this score is going to take you to an advantage of getting discounts on next papers when you get yourself enrolled for the next session so that's how the whole system is going to work let me just tell you one more thing that i will also be handling all your queries uh, via email and you can email me at taxation e at wifi.com so uh, we are providing you multiple forums through which you can contact with the tutor tutor is there to help you out in every possible manner and along with me there is a dedicated teacher assistant who will be studious who will be there in your group and he'll be like handling with all the minute issues that you come across while going through your session whether it is related to the recorded sessions or it is related to your assignments or it is something related to live sessions
let me just take you to the planner as well i just hope that the schedule has already been shared with you people but i would like to have a look at it there you go so i have basically uh, segregated the whole thing into numerous chapters chapter number 1 which is about introduction to taxes chapter 2 which is about income tax computation chapter 3 which is about rental and investment income while chapter number 4 which is about employment income these four chapters are to be covered by september 29 and on the same day i'll be taking a live session where i will be discussing exam style questions with you people uh, which are focusing uh, the, the, the rules related to income taxes rental and investment figure employment income and all and that's how you people will be able to develop confidence with respect to the chapters that you have covered in the form of recorded lectures then there comes the second week where you have to cover chapter number 5 which is about tax adjusted trading profit calculation chapter number 6 which is about capital allowances basis period being the 7th chapter and national insurance contribution being 8th chapter so these next four chapters will have to be covered till 6th of october by covering of the chapter i mean that i would expect you people to have gone through the recorded sessions and on 6th of october i'll be taking a live class and the practice related to specifically these four chapters will then be discussed afterwards trading losses partnership pension and income tax administration i mean from chapter 9 to chapter 12 these four chapters are to be understood well in terms of uh, recorded sessions from october 7 to october 13 so october 13th is said to be the deadline and on the same day i'll be taking a live class where the practice related to these topics will be done then a comprehensive type of tax which is capital gains tax will have to be covered in between october 14th to october 20th i mean october 20th is going to be the deadline by which you have covered all the rules and regulations related to this type of taxation and then the live class is going to be held on the same day in order to reiterate all the concepts related to this type of tax then in the fifth week we will be covering chapter number 14 and 15 and that's about inheritance tax and value added tax respectively for which the deadline is october 27 and the last week is allocated to corporation tax from october 28 to 3rd november you need to uh, go through the recorded sessions and 3rd november is the deadline by which the last live session is going to take place see if you will be taking all these live sessions and then as what i've told you people that at the end of every live session an assignment is going to be allocated to you if you are well prepared you will be dealing the assignment properly you are actually taking the quiz basically then that would mean that you are pre well prepared the you are prepared well enough to appear in your exam and just tell you one thing that in my journey of the last 18 years i have produced many nation wide as well as world wide distinction holders so just keep this thing mind over here that if you really want to pass your exam you have to prepare the paper you will have to prepare the syllabus on a weekly basis according to the same planner that is being shown in front of you on your screens would like to bring your notice would like to bring uh, uh, in your notice one more thing that though we are providing you with the recorded le lectures along with that e notes will also be given to you people which are downloadable printable 
so you will not have to go through uh, your any textbook which is like big enough which is like a source of uh, scaring any person so we have just made concise and comprehensive e notes uh, that's a good source that is covering each and every point you can download them you can print them you can read them at your uh, as per your convenience so this is the study resource which i promised to give you and i just hope this this is going to be uploaded on your portal very soon along with that if you want to you can visit your acca website where a lot of technical articles are existing so if you really want to have an idea that how the questions are tested what is the depth of the questions being tested then you can watch the videos and you can read those articles that's quite a helpful tool and along with that one thing which is must and in the live classes i'll be doing practice from this thing and that's called kit your revision kit uh, there are two famous publishers bpp and kaplan but i recommend only kaplan you need not to waste your time in doing two kits because most of the question in the kits are same to each other but what i recommend for computational purposes kaplan is the most recommended kit to be done if you do the kit you will have a grip on each and everything and you can pass your exam very easily kit is something that you will have to purchase one thing which i would like to add over here that when you visit your acc website there you can also see past exam paper so every teacher is in the favor of going through the past exam paper but i would say it's a big no for you why first of all tax is the subject which keeps on changing every year every year the tax rules are changed so whatsoever the exam has been tested in the past attempt was designed according to the last year's rule was uh, basically formatted formulated according to old rules and their answers were prepared accordingly so when you are going to take your exam in this session where latest rules and regulations are being applied then that past question has somehow become invalid for you people but don't worry your kit is basically comprising over all these past exam questions but they have amended them according to the latest rules and regulations so technically when you go through the kaplan kit you will be doing past exam questions but those questions which have been amended according to the latest rules so that is basically uh, uh, giving you an aid in terms of perfect preparation as far as the latest techniques and concepts are concerned well students just tell me that if you people would like to ask anything anything else related to the course the syllabus the way uh in which your schedule has been designed any concern which you have for live practice sessions or any query with respect to mock exams or assignments anything else for which you are concerned for kindly let me know by dropping your questions in the dialog box and can i uh, please uh, have one favor from you people can you please all turn your cameras on except for one person who is saying that there is that that's 8:30 a am in his country and it is not possible for him to uh, turn the camera on so that's quite well but if you can do it for just a minute so that i can see the faces of all you people because it's not a physical class i just want to give uh, a feeling of uh, face to face interaction with you people so kindly let your cameras uh, on for just a single minute hello you can turn your mics on even right now let me just unmute you all 
Can you please turn your microphones on? No? Isn't it possible? Um, now, I just hope now it can be possible if you try to. I think there is some inbuilt setting to, uh, because of which uh, you people cannot turn your microphones on. But there are a few more people in the group as well. But I think they don't want to show me their faces. That's okay. So thank you so much for showing me your faces. Now you can drop your question in the dialogue box and let me know if you have any query related to the subject, to your tutor or anything else uh, uh, which is like bothering you as far as your uh, planet is concerned. Please let me know. There had been a question asked to me, uh, lectures will be available from today. Uh, we will keep on uploading the lectures one by one. So right now, I think the first chapter has been uploaded. Any important topics so that we can focus more? Uh, see, for me, everything is important because I really want you people to get the distinction. So when we aim high, we wouldn't be like uh, putting a cap on the area. Uh, but still, income tax and corporation tax. These two types of taxes are must. You really have to go through income tax and corporation tax. While the rest of the taxes, as what I said, they are very important. But if you are asking me what is like more important than the rest of the syllabus, then I would say, yes, it's income tax and corporation tax. I was late, not sure this was mentioned, but uh, what day will be the live session? Uh, the planner will be shared with you people in your WhatsApp group. Uh, but still, I'm just going to show it to you again. So the first live session will be conducted on September 29th. So right after, I guess, 15 days, we'll be meeting again. So you people actually do not have to ask anything. Being a student, you have to be curious. You really need to ask me. You need to bombard your questions. Uh, you really need to be curious at how the things are being uh, done and uh, will you be like uh, able enough to cater each and everything which we ask. There has to be something in your mind. How can you be so sleepy? Uh, okay, the question is, is it more theoretical or numerical? Uh, it's like 80%, around 75 to 80% numerical. So we'll be like much focusing on the numerical side, though we will not be missing the theoretical side. You, you like numeric, okay. That's nice. I am not expecting uh, any further questions. So I am going to sign off. Just hope to meet you all on first live session, which will be conducted on September 29th. And by that day, I just hope that all of you must have covered till chapter number four. But right now, only one chapter has been uploaded. And that's about introduction to taxes. And I just hope that income tax computation along with the rental and investment income will have been uploaded by Monday. Okay, class, wish you very best of luck for uh, this taxation journey. Okay, this session is 8 a.m. for me. So is it like very early morning for you? I just have to say one thing with the fresh breeze of air taxation is going to be understood very well so 8 a.m being an early riser you will not just be okay i'm at work so my may not make the live sessions okay okay so you can take the recording of it i was just hoping that 
you may have some sort of concern with 8 a.m but uh, you are studious enough you are at work so don't worry at all uh, the recording of the live session will be provided to you people after the end of every session and even after taking the session you still come up with any question you have whatsapp group facility you have this email facility you can contact me anytime i will be there to help you out in the every possible manner you'll be at work too uh, but you will listen that's that's the dedication that i want so that's perfect the study and the work has to be balanced simultaneously. If someone is at work and is not able to take the live classes, must have to get done with the live classes in the form of its recording. So as long as the task is done, the mission is accomplished. So that's perfectly fine. Study hub questions should I do? Study hub, uh, educational hub, which is... Uh, uh, recently launched by ACCA on their websites and quite frankly it's free of cost right now but it is going to be uh, with cost later in future it's a very good source uh, through which you can not just learn the topics and yes their questions are very well designed so yes you can do uh, the practice on study hub too so I think let's call it a day I am just going to sign off. Thank you so much for being a part of this session. See you all in the next uh, live sessions. Wish you very best of luck. Bye.